Shalom, Shalom, back for another quick lesson. And uh, first and foremost, as always, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. And next, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone who teach and who rule will. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether you will hear or forbear. And today, I just want to read uh, out of the book of St. Matthew, chapter 10. And it's going to be about uh, suffering persecution, okay? And then also understanding that, um, you know, that our job is just to preach the gospel, all right? Just preach the word, and if they can't get it, we move on. Simple as that, all right? And understand also that most of the people that you preach to are not going to get it. All right, so I'm going to, uh, once again, read out of the book of St. Matthew, chapter 10. I'm going to read the full chapter, and uh, as I read, I'm just going to make little anecdotes. And um, Yeah, that's pretty much it, so we'll go ahead and get started. St. Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 1, it says, And when he had called unto his, him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, the first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, and Labias, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve, uh, these twelve, Yahweh sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. All right, so that tells you right there, you know, that's uh, that's very edifying, telling you that pretty much don't worry about the thing, don't, pretty much don't worry about your sustenance, all right? You do the will of the Lord, you do the work of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, then you're going to, you know, they're going to make sure that you're taken care of. All right. It says, verse 11, and into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy and there abide till you go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whatsoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. All right. So when when you're when you're preaching the, the word, the gospel, okay, all you got to do is preach it. That's it. All you got to do do is bring out the scriptures and bring out the hundred percent truth according to the Bible. And the people who are meant to hear it are going to hear it. All right. They they're going to be drawn to it. Okay. Because um, it tells us in the scripture that no man can come near to the Father, or near to the Son, unless the Father had had uh, drew him in. All right, that's uh, John six and forty four. Let's get that. No, okay, John, uh, Saint John, chapter six and verse forty four. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So there you go. Very plain and simple. All right, <clears throat> so you can preach the word, but if they're not meant to get it, they're not going to get it. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's go to. Uh, I'm going to get that real quick as well. Might as well Isaiah chapter six. All right, Isaiah chapter six. I'm going to scroll on down. Let's see, to verse nine. It says, "And here, and he said, go and tell this people." Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, 
and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. All right, so the Lord, he doesn't He doesn't want to heal everybody, okay? He doesn't want to heal everybody. And um, it's just the truth. The Lord ain't coming back for everybody. He's only coming for the elect, all right? And that's all. Uh, let me think. What scripture is that? I think, let's see. I think Matthew. I think 21 and 34, maybe. Nope, nope, that's not it. Like 20, 24, Matthew 24 and 31, maybe. The Lord is only coming for the elect. <clears throat> yep, here it is. Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from, from, one, hand, from one end of heaven to the other. All right? So... Once again, he ain't coming. He's not coming to save everybody. He's coming to save the elect. Many, many are called, but few are chosen. All right. So uh, let's see. Back in Matthew chapter ten. All right. I'm gonna read that again. Verse, uh, verse fourteen. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you. It shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. All right. So, and this is pretty much talking about the persecution, man. Persecution of the wicked. Okay, and that, that comes from all sides. That comes from two-thirds. It comes from Esau. Uh, you know, the Christians, they're going to constantly persecute, man. And they're going to be, especially when Jacob's trouble comes, they're going to be the ones that are delivering you up to the government when you, when you, you know, resist that mark. Okay. It says, um, verse 18, And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. All right, so you see that it tells you, okay, it tells you that uh, you know the Lord, because that's that's a, that's a huge. It's not even really an argument. It's very it's very obvious if you just read the scriptures that the Lord is coming for the Israelites, and they can't they don't understand that there's two different types of Gentiles. You have the Gentiles who are the natural Gentiles of the world, okay, the people of the world, and then you have the Israelite Gentiles who are a part of the different um, who have been indoctrinated by the different cultures and religions and all these false practices wherever they have been scattered at, all right? So the Lord, when it says that, there's no, no, uh, no difference between Jew or Gentile. It's talking about the Israelite Gentiles. But this right here in this context, verse 18, is talking about the actual Gentiles, all right? For a testimony against them and the Gentiles, because we, we prophesy against the rulers of this world, all right? As every other, as every other uh, prophet before us. Let's, let's go. Let's go there. Jeremiah twenty-eight and eight. All right. Jeremiah twenty-eight and eight. It says, "These the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old, prophesy both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war, and of evil and of pestilence." So that's what they did. All right. And the same thing. The prophets always have came to do that. They never came to, to to tell the congregation that they're going to be blessed and, you know, get a million dollars and all that stuff because. This is not our rest, all right? We're still in captivity. Okay, let's go to, uh, so now Matthew chapter 10, and let me just close that out. Matthew chapter 10 and verse uh, 19. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that, in that same hour that ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. All right, that's how the Holy Spirit, that's how the, uh, that's how the Lord speaks through, through his men, through the prophets. All right. Verse 21, and the brother shall deliver and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death and the father, the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endured to the end shall be saved. All right. So once again, man, you know, we're going to become enemies of the state. That's part of the persecution, especially when that. When that, uh, you know, Revelation 13 and 16 comes out, 
that's that's gonna be part of it, man. We're gonna be uh, enemies of the state, all right? Because we're not gonna take it, Lord willing. Verse twenty three. But when they persecute you in this city, flee you into another. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? All right. And what what this is saying here is, okay. So essentially, the uh, the uh, the religious people, the Pharisees of, of the of that time, they hated Yahweh and they hated the disciples, and they constantly were were uh, bearing false witness against him and claiming that he was performing witchcraft and stuff like that. So this is saying that. You know, you're not you're not any greater than he is. If if they're saying that the master of the house is a witch, because Beelzebub is is like the king of demons. Matter of fact, I'll click on that. We'll get a definition for Beelzebub, and we'll go we'll go into the blue letter as well, and I'll tell you what that is. So Beelzebub, it says Beelzebub, also known as Bezelbul or Bezelbuth, and occasionally known as the Lord of the Flies, is a, is a name derived. From a Philistine, Philistine god formerly worshipped in Ekron, and later adopted by some Abrahamic religions as a major demon. All right, so they're pretty much saying that Yahushai was was a demon. All right, that's pretty much what they're saying. It says, "How much more shall they call them of his household?" So, how much more are they going to persecute and call, uh, you know, speak against you as, as as if you're demonic, if you are following the true Messiah, Yahushai? It says, uh, verse 26, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness that ye speak in light, and what ye hear in the ear that ye preach upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. All right, so, you know, we, we got to fear. We got to fear the one that, once again, man, not, not Esau, all right? Not Esau, Edom, the so-called white man and, and their military and all that kind of stuff, all right? Not the devil. We don't fear them, all right? The, the elites and all that, all right? But we fear the Heavenly Father because the Heavenly Father has the power to not only kill the body, but also to send you into hell, which is a condition played on earth. You'd be reincarnated into terrible situations, all right? Now, let's, uh, let's see. It also speaks of this in Hebrews chapter 2. We've, we've been made free from that fear because we have the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures. We understand that, that the death of the body is not the death, you know, it's not actually true death. All right. Okay. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. Actually, uh, I'll start at verse 13. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children, which the most high hath given me for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil and it goes all the way back to Esau Edom in Genesis 27 he was given the power he was given the, uh, the blessing of the sword alright it says verse 15 and deliver them who through Fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. All right, because that's how that's how Esau Edom controls. All going all the way back to the ancient Roman Empire. All right, they would do they would do they would do very very terrible things to the people. All right, particularly the Israelites. In the same way that the same way that even in recent uh, history of the revived Roman Empire, which is here in the daughter of Babylon, the land of the north. Okay. What we call America, the uh, you know Esau Edom, he he had he had the people the you know our ancestors in slavery, and they were they were fearful of their lives. They lived in a constant fear of their lives. Okay, but now through this knowledge, wisdom, understanding, we're not afraid of Esau anymore. All right, we're not afraid of his system, of his weaponry, of his sword, because you know we 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 depend on and we trust that Yahweh Bashmi Yahusha is going to protect us. And deliver us from the evil man. Okay. We, we, we really believe in that. And that brings me to a scripture I want to bring out. Psalms. 
17 and 13. It says, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Okay? So, once again, you know, we trust that Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is going to uh, deliver us. All right? We trust that he's going to deliver us from the power of this devil. We know that two thirds are going to be destroyed. All right? But we don't, we don't have fear of that. Okay. I want to uh, go to another another scripture on that. Psalms chapter 140. Okay. Let's see. Psalms chapter 140. And let me see. Where is it at that I wanted to get? Uh, Salaki, bear with me. Here it is. Verse 1. Psalm chapter 140 and verse 1. It says, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. All right? That we, we, we trust in that. We really, we really trust in that. We trust that the Lord is going to, is going to uh, deliver us. It says, Which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. All right. So, you know, we we're not afraid of we're not afraid of Esau anymore and his tricks. All right. We're not afraid of his sword, his weaponry anymore, because we believe that Yahweh Bashem is going to deliver us from his clutches, from the clutches of, of Esau. All right. Um, back to Matthew chapter ten. I see it says. Let's see, where was I at? <clears throat> Salakia. Okay. Here it is. I'm going to read that again. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. All right. I feel like... Okay, yep, yep. Verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing... And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father which is in heaven. Because that time is going to come when they're going to want you to denounce the son. All right. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father which is in heaven. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after, followeth after me is not worthy of me. So, you know, once again, as part of the suffering, all right, you know, you're going to, you're going to enemy of the state and of the people. Okay. Friends and family turn against you. You got to really be a hundred percent all in when it comes to coming into this truth. All right. It says he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. All right. He that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of, the, of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink one, unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. All right. So, you know, blessed are those who bless the man that the Lord set up, the prophets. All right. Simple as that. I think that's a beautiful scripture. I got one that I want to bring out. Before we close out, just kind of exhorting the people, you know, to uh, stay strong no matter what. Oh, so like here. You know what? I'll just search it up on here. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 1. And here it is. Okay, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21. For me to live is Hamashiach. And to die is gain. 
All right. So you got to keep that, you know, keep that state in mind. You know, if it says if you remain faithful until death, he will give thee a crown of life. I think that's in Revelation chapter 2. Let's go there. Yep, here it is. Okay. It goes right into what we're talking about. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. All right. That ye may be tried, ye shall receive, ye shall have tribulation ten days. Could be more, could be less. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So that's it. There you go. All right. You got to keep that mindset. But with that being said, as always, we give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakudas. Lord willing, this is edifying to the elect where we may be scattered. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear or forbear. We almost up out of here. Shalom.